Syrup of Violet Women in Shakespeare's time had many responsibilities. They bore and cared for the children, of course, but they were also responsible for other activities, such as gardening, food preparation, food storage, and the preparation of medicines. Through these activities, women gained broad practical experience in working with botanical materials, learning how to cultivate, harvest, and prepare a wide range of plants and plant products. There was no sharp distinction between food preparation and the preparation of medicines at this time. For example, syrup of violet, made from crushed violet flowers, water, and sugar, was commonly used as a refreshing beverage, but it was also medicine for a wide variety of complaints. It was a calming agent, was used to ease fevers and coughs, and relieved inflammations of the liver, lungs, and chest. Refined sugar was sold in hardened blocks called sugar loaves and needed to be ground down before using. The sugar in the syrup acted as a preservative, keeping it fresh for up to several months. Although it was expensive, people in Shakespeare's time used large amounts of sugar in their food, and this practice seems to have carried over into the preparation of medicines. If too much was added and the food tasted too sweet, this would have been adjusted by adding acidic liquids like lemon juice, orange juice, or verjuice, a flavored vinegar made from crab apples. The lemon juice used in some of the syrup of violet recipes may have served the same purpose because even when diluted with water, the syrup was very sweet. Adding lemon juice would have reduced the sweetness but it also produced a striking color change, turning the purple syrup a rich red color. In the 1650s, when the chemist Robert Boyle began to systematically study the nature of color, one of the first materials that he investigated was the syrup of violet from his own kitchen. He discovered that just as acids turned it red, adding a base or alkaline solution to the syrup turned it green. It was from this and other plant materials that he eventually assembled the indicator colors, the color change test that chemists would use to identify acids and bases for the next 200 years. Boyle made extensive use of syrup of violet in his own chemical studies, but because its association with women and women's practices was not recorded, it failed to become part of the historical narrative.